night. I'm Rhonda Draculas and we are live. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's gonna be a fun night tonight. So give you guys a couple of seconds to jump on here. Uh, tonight we're gonna be doing several finishes. Actually, we're gonna do one of the uh, easy, easy, easy marble. Uh, and then we're gonna kinda morph it into several other finishes. So you'll hear a lot tonight. Uh, this could be a finish all on its own, but we're gonna go to the next level. So you're gonna hear, hear that a lot tonight. All right, so newbies, if you are a newbie, please let us know. Let us know where you are watching us from and um, we'll give you a shout out. So we appreciate so much uh, you guys joining us. If you're new, uh, share this video if you don't mind. And uh, we are rocking and rolling on our, um, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. We are rocking and rolling on our um, subs and uh, the channel is growing. So we are really trying hard to get up to 100,000 uh, by the end of the year. I'd love to do it by the summer, but that's not gonna happen. But by the end of the year, we're thinking it's possible. Okay, say hello to all my amazing moderators. Erica, Vamp, Clara, introduce yourself. Put your YouTube channels and everything on there. Guys, please, please, please go support these girls because they're amazing at what they do. Um, also, uh, let's see, Keith, I think Keith's maybe out there. Um, Keith, uh, Keith is right at, I believe, being monetized. I'm not sure if he is over that hump yet, but you guys go check out Keith's um, channel as well. He's almost there. So make sure you guys go subscribe to his channel. All right, and of course, the man of the hour, the love of my life. What? Yes, my, how do you say it? Corazon? Yeah. Yes. Um, behind the camera, Mr. Kenny. Give yes, him some what's up, guys? Love, y'all. Glad right. y'all are out here playing with us tonight. Yeah. Uh, missed y'all last uh, week, but Clara, like always, knocked it out of the park. So, Let's get started because I have resin in the cups and it's been there a little bit and whew, we need to get it out of the cups. All right, so we're starting with a black substrate. We're using uh, MDF. We've rounded over the edges and if Clara, Bamp, Erica, you guys watch this. Why first first answer wins? Why do we round over our edges? First correct answer wins. Alrighty, so we round over our edges. Now the reason that we fogged our edges white. Randy, is, it says flow. Who? Randy. Randy who? George. Randy George, you want a t-shirt. So Randy, I need you to email me at Rhonda at rk3designs.com. Uh, Give me the size shirt and your address and I'll get that out to you tomorrow. All right, so what we've done, guys, I'm just in that mood tonight. I Are mean, you? I don't know what we're gonna do. We may give away the moon, I don't know. Whoa. So um, anyway, the reason we fogged our edges is because the finish that we're doing has whites in it, but we're gonna incorporate the black background to pop through and give us a little depth in our piece. However, I don't want a hard black line on my edges. That's why I have fogged it with white. And baby, if you'll give a close up here, I wanna show them how we fog. Make sure when you fog an edge, See how very soft this fog is? It's not a hard line right next to my edge because if you do a really hard line of white, that line that you create with your spray with your spray paint, it could ghost up through your finish. So we fogged very softly 
And that way when our epoxy rolls over the edge, that edge right there is going to kind of peekaboo, and we don't want that edge to be black. We want it to be white. We are, are we a little, and that's okay. If some of your spots are a little bit shy of paint, that's okay. That's going to give us some depth in the piece. All right, so here's what we're going to start off with. We have white alumilite dye. Also, you can substitute the white alumilite dye for the just resin titanium white, which I'm going to tell you is actually my favorite white. I love the titanium from just resin. Everyone else loves it too because we had 30 bottles uh, last week and uh, we don't have any now. So mm. we have some coming though. Okay, so that's the white. Now, if you guys have watched me enough, you know that we do white opaque, which is basically what we call whole milk. Then we do white translucent, which we call skim milk, all right? And you'll see the difference in the opacities. All right, guys, so again, Clara, Vamp, and Erica, first one wins. Why do we have two different opacities in our white? First answer wins. All right, then after that, we have just resin. Okay, so I'm gonna, I kind of screwed up here, y'all, uh, because this is how I cook. I, when I'm mixing, I don't pay attention. Depth. Who? Depth. Depth, yes. Who is Vicky that? Vicki Salmon. Vicki, who? I Salmon. Can't. Salmon, Vicki. Leave, uh, email me, Rhonda at rk3designs.com. Tell me what size shirt you want and your address. Oh, wait, hold on. Wait, oops. I what? saw Todd is really the winner. Okay, well, I'm going to send one to each. Okay. All right, so Todd, who, Andrews? Varner. Varner. Okay, Todd and Vicky, mm -hmm. you guys are both going to get a t-shirt. I'm telling you guys, I, I, feel, I feel generous today. Okay, so uh, the next thing, and then I'm going to have to kind of explain this a little bit. So, I was going to use... And I sent Clara the link and vamping them the, the, the products. I was going to use just pearl white. Well, not paying attention, I put pearl white in my cup. And then I was going to make another cup of Shooting Star by Resin Art. Well, I kind of dumped the Resin Art in the pearl. So we have Oops. Shooting Pearl. How about that? A shooting so, pearl. We have huh? shooting pearl, which actually is very pretty. So that's what we're going to go with tonight. Just like when I cook, it's going to turn out. Just have to try <laughs> me. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> if it's anything like you're cooking, it's probably not going to turn out. Oh, hush your mouth. All right. Here we go. So now, and I also have white. So look at the ratio here, guys. I want to show you kind of the ratio we're using. So we have about the same amount of opaque white, whole milk, as we do clear, all right? Then a little bit less of our translucent white, our skim milk, then our aluminum, which is really pretty. And this aluminum has a tendency to float on the surface. And then we have our shooting, what do we call it? Shooting pearl? Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. All right, here we go. So let's start off with some clear, but I'm not gonna use all my clear right off the bat. So what are you just gonna grease it? I'm just gonna grease me up a pan here. Now, I am using three ounces per square foot, but I mixed up, so actually I lied. I mixed up four ounces per square foot. But I'm not going to put all of that on the surface right now. I'm going to leave some in the cup. Why? Because we may use it later, and I wanted to make sure. Because we're going to do quite a few. <laughs> we're going to do quite a few finishes here tonight. All right. So our grease coat, skim coat, uh, grease the pan, all of that. 
it, it's been called all kind of things. That's what we're doing. And I'm going to get my edges, push my finger over, push that epoxy down under your edge because you want that epoxy to flow. Because, here goes another t-shirt, epoxy likes to what? Somebody gets the right answer, let me know. Epoxy likes to what? And it has to do with me go ahead and pushing it over the edge. So first one to win. Amy. Amy. Amy who? Just says Amy Epoxy. Okay, Amy Epoxy, you need to email me, Rhonda, at rk3designs.com. Let me know what you want. All right, babe, come show them this fancy little Hold thing on. you have. I think Kenny's getting a name for us. What are we waiting on? I'm working here. Hold on. You're working? All right. So, I don't know where the camera's pointing. It's pointing right in the middle of the, the okay, board. Okay, so they can see. Can they yes. see the whole board? Yes. All right. Okay. So, we have our skim coat down, and I torched it. I like to torch my skim coat uh, just to help things flow. All right. So, we're going to start off with our white opaque. And ever so random, how random? So random. So random. And I did leave myself a little bit in the cup, okay? So we got the white down. Let's go with some, I'm going to go with this aluminum. And I'm going to just start kind of putting it down. I don't want that aluminum. I probably actually mixed up way more than what I needed. But I don't want that aluminum to take over. So I'm going to put it heavier in some spots than other spots. And I'm definitely, I didn't even use half of what was in my cup. All right. So got that down. Now we're going to come with our shooting per, oh, that was my drink. That almost was a disaster. Um, so for those of you that know Evan, Evan is visiting me tonight. So... Maybe that's why I'm in a good mood. All right, now we're coming down with our pearl, shooting pearl, which is actually pearl white and shooting star by Resin Art, two mixed together. I saved again. I saved some in a cup. Now we're coming with our translucent. Now, if you'll notice now, as I start to put it on the board, I'm not just dumping it on top of each other. Do you notice now how I'm kind of filling in my negative space or my holes, that's kind of what I'm doing, okay? And I'll just flip that cup upside down. I'm really not going to save any of that. Uh, and then let's go ahead and add the rest of my clear. Now, my clear I'm using as kind of a buffer, and it's going to help create depth down to our substrate. Remember, we're doing white over a black substrate. So that black is gonna start kind of peeking through. Show them this little fancy little thing here. So I love this. Mitch sent this to me. Mitch Quist sent this to me from Stone Coat. And I love it. So now when your hands are like nasty, like mine, you don't have to grab your spray bottle to clean your hands. So we are actually gonna start carrying these. Um, I found uh, I'm gonna be a distributor so <laughs> I will be, have these available to you guys here pretty quick on our website. And they're going to be various sizes. I just think I have to buy 47 million of them at one time to be able to be a distributor. So, all righty. Got everything down. This could not <laughs> be a finish quite yet. All right. So we're going to take it, warm it up some.
All right. Get our Bondo spreader and very lightly, we're going to start melding. Now, let me give you a little bit of advice. If you are doing this over an existing countertop and you're worried that the product is not going to flow enough, you can tape your edges and you can bump up the amount of material you're using to five to six ounces per square foot. That's going to ensure that you have plenty of product on your surface and that it flows nicely. Now you need to remember if you if you use that much product, you're going to make sure that you tape your edges because if you don't and you use that much product, all of that product is going to run off your edges. I'm at about probably three and a half ounces per square foot right now uh, on this surface. So now what I love about this, and honestly guys, this could definitely be a finish all on its own. This is so pretty because it's a marble. You're, you can see down and I don't think the camera is gonna give you the 3D illusion that it's actually giving me. Because we have a black substrate and we're using white and transparent uh, tinted epoxy, that transparent is allowing, that transparency is allowing that black background to pop up and definitely play a role in what this looks like. If you did this on a white substrate, completely would change the look of this. It would be beautiful. And I do this finish on a white background, but doing it on a, bla a black bra background, bleh, I can't talk. Doing it on a black background definitely brings in a whole new element and depth in your piece. And I absolutely love it. Now you could do this on a, a creamy background. You could do this even if you wanted to bring in a pop of color. I've done this exact finish and I painted my background uh, turquoise. And it is so pretty because now wherever you have clear or transparent, that color, whatever your background color is, is going to pop through and give you that illusion that you have that color epoxy. Now, another thing, I've had a lot of people want to do red, white, and blue or maroon and white for a football team or something. Doing red, white, and blue, if you start mixing your reds and your whites, you're gonna get straight up pink. So what I have done is I've actually come in and either painted my substrate white or paint my substrate red. Then come over it with clear and whatever color. Like if I painted my background red, I would come over with clear and white. I would meld it, that red would show through. That's how I'm getting my red and white without it turning pink. Once that dries, or if you use the amazing quick coat, which will dry in four hours, then come over your next coat with your blue and clear. So now you've got red, white, and blue, but you're not having interference with all the colors and getting secondary colors. So that's one way to be able to layer and create depth and also be able to use colors that don't normally play well together. Okay, so this could be a finish all on its own. Alrighty, so let's go to the next step. Okay, so first of all, Let's take the leftover epoxy that we have and let's create some, they're not necessarily veins, 
They're almost like little fault lines, okay? So I'm gonna come in here with my pearl and I'm gonna start adding some veins. And you can do this kind of however you want to lay them out. Just try not to create zebras by getting too stripey. I'm not doing them really thick, okay? I'm doing them fairly thin. All right, and if you are doing this on a substrate um, and you've taped your edges, they are going to move really nicely without you having to tilt. Obviously, this case, I'm able to tilt my piece and get some really cool designs, and you'll see that here in just a second. If you don't have the ability to tilt, yet you've done, say, six ounces per square foot, your piece is going to move anyway. All right, so I really like that. I'm gonna come over with a little bit of the silver as well. Now this is, this is definitely in the making, guys. Don't judge it quite yet. All right, now we're gonna torch a little bit. And we're gonna tilt. Again, if you don't have the ability to tilt the piece that you're working on, don't worry. Just use a little more per square foot and that's going to help you get that real pretty shift. I don't know where Kenny went. But if you can see now, I'll get him to do a close-up here in just a minute. You don't want your epoxy to move super fast, okay? I'm just trying to create what we call like a color shift. And I'll show you when Kenny gets back how the veins kind of start to shift. I think he's put, oh, did you put that? Okay, good. All right, so if you can kind of zoom in here, look how my lines start to shift over and almost make like a shadow. And it really does give kind of that slate look. And then I love to go a step further and hit it. Well, obviously this could be a, a, a finish on its own as well. Let me tilt. Let me tilt. <laughs> but look at how tilting creates a sliding effect of all of these colors. And they go, one goes over the other, and it just gives a 3D stacking look. This is absolutely gorgeous. Now, I'm going to hit it with some alcohol. Babe, watch out. This is just isopropyl alcohol, and I'm barely squeezing my trigger, and I'm barely putting any on the top. Now what that's doing, it's giving, look what it's doing to the aluminum and to that white uh, pearl. Holy cow, that is so pretty. And you get faint cells, super, super faint. I love that. Now you may want to take a screenshot of this, guys, if you like it. Uh, Kenny will kind of back up a little bit and let you all take a screenshot because we're fixing to change it dramatically. So I need you guys to remember all right, what there this. It is. All right, I need you guys to remember what this looks like. Okay, now. I had a lady uh, reach out to me, and I also think she posted, and you know what, it might, it might have been, I, I don't know who it was actually, I've, I've gotten so many of them. Anyway, I got an email, and then I also, I think they posted it in the Insiders, and they wanted this particular look. 
So the only way I could really figure out how to get this choppy little black specks and white specks was to use some Montana Marble Spray. Now it's gonna look funky for a minute, but we're gonna come in here and create some really fun looks. If y'all have never played with this Montana Marble Spray, y'all, you don't know what you're missing. Also, Stone Coat is gonna quit carrying this. I have 600 cans of each color. So, and I'm also, um, will start to be a distributor for this as well. So, uh, you need it? I got it. All right, here we go. White first. We're gonna come up nice and high, and we're just gonna kinda shoot this out over. Now. Let them see this. I love that. Now, you're gonna notice a little bit because of the way the paint is, you're gonna notice, and we're going over wet epoxy, it does leave a little bit of air bubbles because of the way the cap forces the paint out of the, the top. It's no big deal. Those will break up. It's not a big deal, don't worry about it. Now, I'm gonna go over with black as well. Now, I've seen this actual stone in marble slabs that looks identical to this, identical, and it was not cheap. So this could actually also be a finish on its own. If you stop here, if you like this look, your next step would be to let it cure for 24 hours and then come back with a flood coat, your clear flood coat. So that's, uh, what are you doing? Don't, just keep on doing what you're doing. My husband is fixing to bust his butt. No, I'm not. He's standing on a stool. Anyway, so you would, you would cover this with a clear flood coat and you'd be good to go. Apply the UTC if you want to use the UTC and you'd be ready to go. But, of course, I'm going to go to the next step. So what we're going to do now is come in and we're going to cause these, this melding, we're going to cause it to kind of break up and be background noise. All right, so I'm going to take my Bondo spreader and ever so lightly, as so I don't disrupt a lot of the background, we're going to rub this in and as it continues to move, you're going to have these little specks. Now, I cannot remember what the name of that stone, that slab was that the guy sent me or the girl sent me. I can't remember. But it straight up had these little tiny specks of black just like this. All right. So as soon as we finish this. All right, so as this continues to move, those, that black is going to really kind of move and sink down into the finish. All right, now, this is the fun part too. I'm gonna get white spray paint and we're gonna create layers. So that's what we're doing. We're creating layers upon layers upon layers. That's how we get the visual depth. All right, so I put spray paint just on my table. Mm -hmm. All right, so I have my Bondo spreader. All right, now I'm just gonna kind of chop. As I chop, I'm kind of letting my epoxy, see how it drags, how I drag the pieces. Now you don't wanna over chop, okay? You just want that white to kind of be accents on the top. You don't even have to do the whole top. But you want to just kind of chop that in there. If you see areas like this that's a little too much white, chop it and move it. It all kind of depends on what the look is that you're going for. But by kind of dragging 
that Bondo spreader, you're causing that white to kind of meld into the piece. And it's very important that you don't do it patterned, meaning you don't just do one direction, that you do it all different directions and kind of work it out so you don't have big spots of area. Now I'm going to show you what this looks like once we chop it out. Also as you kind of work it out, less paint is on your Bondo spreader so you get less of that effect as you move it out. All right, now we're going to hit it with some alcohol. And you get a beautiful 3D depth look. Now, I would probably wait about 15 minutes or so, depending on how thick your epoxy is, and that's going to depend on what your temper, temp temperature is. But now, see how these black specks are just kind of background noise with all this going on? It's just creating some really cool layers. And that's what makes things look real, is layers and layers and layers. So I'm going to come back again, kind of bring it in a little more white on the surface. Like I said, don't over chop in one area because you'll get mud super quick. And don't load up like I just did there. You don't want to load up too much white at one time. Like see that big spot right there? I'm going to kind of let that grow a little bit and then I'll come back and fix it here in a minute. I don't want to over chop it. If you get too much like I just did right there, leave it alone a minute, let it grow, and then you can come back and fix it. Now if you like that look, when you hit it with alcohol, you're going to have a really cool effect. It's just going to be a lot of that effect in one area. Now, if you want longer lines instead of little choppy lines, you can use a long stick or you can just kind of go in a line with your, your Bondo spreader and just kind of make bigger lines going out. Yeah, see, hone in on this right here, Kenny. All right, so see this right here? As I chop and move, see the little lines right there? That's caused from me putting my Bondo spreader down and then dragging it. So see when I put it down and I drag, see how that, that epoxy kind of moves and I get that little line? That's, that's how you get those, those, little, those little lines. Like that, see those little lines? I love that look because then when you hit it with the alcohol, it really does look cool. Don't let your spray paint sit too long on the surface before you fracture it. So do it in sections? Do it in sections, yes. You don't wanna do a 16 foot countertop and then come back and spray your, your spray paint. The reason is, see that big spot right there? I kind of think that's cool if you do it ever so often. I, you don't want that much all over. It's gonna look like an Appaloosa. But don't let your paint sit too long because when you come back to spritz it, that spray paint has a tendency to dry really quickly on the surface and it won't fracture. Now, I don't like that right there. It doesn't look natural. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come pick up some epoxy on my stick or my Bondo spreader, I'm going to add a little epoxy to that and then I'm going to hit it again. See how that softened that out right there? I love this. She talk. said Appaloosa. I said Appaloosa.
It's a you don't horse. Want, yeah, Appaloosa is a horse with spots. So, sorry for the reference. <laughs> okay. What do y'all think? Y'all like that? Give me thumbs up. Give me some feedback. Some likes. Some likes. Some unlikes. If you don't like it, let I'll, me know. I'll give you an unlike. Get, don't you give me an unlike. That is not fair. All right. So, what do you guys want to do? We're only, yeah, we're only about 40 minutes into it. What do you guys want to do? Tell me what, this is your canvas now. Uh-oh. You, you tell me what you want me to do, and then if it goes south, I'm going to blame it all on y'all. How about that? It goes south. <laughs> what would y'all like to see me do on this now? Let me know. Show down. Po point down to this, Kenny, so they can see. Add gold. Gold spray paint? Uh, uh, it just says add gold. You know what? I, okay. If you we had one, leave it. Add some dark turquoise. How about I go mix up a little bit of gold? Swipe. I don't swipe. know what that would be. Mm, I'd have to mix up quite a bit more product if I did a swipe. All right. Fog so, and alcohol. Okay. I could fog the whole thing. Uh, Let's, uh, black spray paint. I'm trying to think what gold I have. For the stick, kind of it would be the same thing as you did in the white. With the black? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't think I have any. any if I'd have to go get everything all messed up if I go get gold. Let me do the black spray paint like you, like they're saying and do it just like I did the white spray paint. A little floating gold. I mean, there. I, can, I tell you what I can do. I can get. Bright silver. I can get some of this. Look. Let's do this. We're going to cheat a little bit. All right. So first of all, let's do this. I've got a little bit of clear epoxy left and I'm going to take this metallic and it's the fast drying metallic okay uh, it's the spray paint that kind of floats on top so what I'm going to do I'm going to mix it in a little bit of clear epoxy now that's going to change the sheen a little bit All right, so let's take that and let's just run, let's run some veins. All right, not a whole lot. Let's just kind of I'll tell you what we can do also. I'm going to pour it out here. I'm just literally guys, I am making this up on the fly. I'm going to pour some of this epoxy on the table and I'm going to dip my stick. I'm going to my Wooey. I'm going to dip the bondo spreader in it. And I'm going to kind of chop it in. Now, I like that. I'm going to kind of take this vein kind of move it a little bit, not a whole lot, just to kind of break it up so it doesn't look so hard. I'm going to leave that one and show the difference. All right, so do you see how I kind of put it on there? I'm going to hit it with a little bit of alcohol. Oh, yeah, that's pretty. Here's the one that I didn't touch that just has straight alcohol on there. Okay, that is that is really pretty. Yeah. Now. Erica or Clara or Vamp, whoever knows, what product, I think it's 007, but I'm not sure. It may be old gold or bright gold. What product acts like the gold? Um, In the spray paint? The spray paint. I can't remember which one it is, um, but I'm going to come and do some more of this. Actually, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm just going to drizzle some more out here just randomly over the the piece pick some up i'm going to just drizzle it over a little bit okay and then i'm going to come back with my bundle spreader 
and some of these areas I'm going to just tap out just so that I don't have real hard lines. This is where the Walk Away Rhonda t-shirt is definitely needed. All right. Okay. Woohoo! Now, what I wanted to show you guys is what happens if you don't put that spray paint in epoxy. Let's just say I'm going to spray it and go straight on there. See the difference? See how that spray paint kind of stays on top? I don't like that look as well because now when I hit it with the alcohol, it's going to just, to me, it kind of overpowers because it stays on top. And when you look at it from a different angle, it catches the eye too much. That's why I like putting it in the epoxy so that it sort of sinks down and causes that reaction and doesn't stay on top. So that's the difference. That's why I use that spray paint and put it in epoxy and I didn't just come straight on like I did the white. I didn't just allow it to stay on top. Okay, I really, I think that's really pretty. Okay, I think I'm gonna come just to kind of try to cover up some of this black, I mean some of this gold. I'm gonna lay a little bit more black down. We're creating depth. Probably should have stopped a long time ago, but we're on a live. You guys, if you're doing this, you can stop wherever you want to. I'm trying to take it to the limit till we both, till we all agree that we took it way too far. <laughs> we might be there right now. Let me torch this really quick. All right. So. Yeah, I think we pushed it a little much. I do love, 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 love how we have a little bit of gold ever so often. So I could definitely see this finish with just little gold pockets like that. And this would be incredible. Just, I, I think this is gorgeous. With the right color accessories, pull knobs and everything, this would be a fabulous finish. Super, super, super pretty. All right, so since we've gone this far, let's just have some fun. How about we do that? All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to get crazy with our spray paint. We're just going to fog some white areas. I'm not going to do... You're going to do black? Um, why not? Let's just hit with some black too, y'all. Might as well. Hey, we're having fun. Not saying this is gonna, this is definitely not where I was going with this when we started, but this is the fun stuff. All right, so now I got black and white all over. We're gonna come in with some Italian dripping going on here. Big drops first. It looks like I'm putting a lot, but I'm really not, guys. You can't, if you put too much alcohol on this surface, you're going to get your piece to really be runny. So now you got your big areas. Now come over and barely push that trigger. And that's where we're going to bring in our smaller spritz to kind of give us our smaller design. All right. Very cool. All right, so we have to let it. We can't make our decision right now. Remember, we have to kind of let that do its thing. But look right there, you could see how it just looks like so much depth. Yeah. So I love, love, love the, the layering effect that you get. It's so pretty. So since we're playing, I guess I can kind of show some people how to maybe if they're having issues with their fogging. 
Anybody having issues with fogging? Y'all want me to show you how to, maybe if you have too much paint on the surface, sure, how to fix that. that? Okay. Obviously, <laughs> we're going to ruin this top because we're really fixing to go way crazy. But you got the gist anywhere along the line, you could have stopped. Okay. But we're playing. All right. So let's say that you're doing the fogging and you've got black. Let's just do up front. It'll be easy for you guys to see. And let's say that you just came in here and put way, way, way too much spray paint down. And you're like, Rhonda, it won't fracture. Because if you put that much spray paint down and then you fog I and mean, then you spritz it, you'll see that it, it'll cause some reactions, but it'll also close back up because there's way, way, way too much spray paint on the surface. So what you can do is take a paper towel and I'll be honest with you, the best thing to use are shop towels. They work a lot better. And then you're just going to come in here, make a rose out of it. Okay. You're going to come in here and you're going to tap and pull. Change so you have a clean area. Tap and pull. Very lightly tap. So you're just kind of taking that paint color off your surface so you don't have so much. And if you don't change to a cleaned area every single time you tap, all you're going to do is make yourself a muddy mess. So just take it, move that area, get you a clean area, tap it. All right, so once you've kind of pulled some of that off, now you can go back. You can spritz it. And you can kind of save the day a little bit. Dun -da -dun. Dun -da -dun. Okay. So what y'all think? We went way too far. <laughs> so personally, personally, what I would have done is the step, let's see, the step where we put our- I want to say before the fog. Yes. I loved it. Now, mm -hmm. I loved with the uh, Bondo spreader and the white. Love that. Yep. The That's gold where, was good. Yeah. And then maybe add a little bit of gold. I don't think I would have added my long uh, veins of gold. I think I would have just done a little bit of the gold on the uh, Bondo spreader. I love that. But that's how you learn, guys. You guys should be doing this and learning. This is how you get happy accidents. Don't, don't look at it as, well, I don't want to waste epoxy. Look at it as I'm investing in my talent. I'm investing, learning how to do this before I go spend a lot of money and do it on my project. So that is one way to look at it and not as I'm wasting epoxy by doing things I don't know what I'm doing. But um, believe me, most of our finishes, Erica and Vamp and Clara can probably attest to this as well. So many of our finishes that we come up with are made from just hours of playing and lots of happy accidents. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so really quickly, um, we're still running the special on the website and it runs through the 21st of April, 10% off all epoxy, supplies, alumalite colors and dyes, alumalite mica powders. The only thing that the 10% doesn't cover are your just resin and, and color passion and, and, and th uh, the specialty colors. Uh, and on top of that 10%, you'll get free shipping if your orders are over $100. That's the key, guys. Don't send me a nasty email and say you didn't get free shipping and you didn't spend $100. So it's 10% off. Even if you don't spend $100, you're going to get that 10% off. On top of, if you do spend $100, then you're going to get free shipping as well. And if you order before noon Central Time, uh, you are going to get it shipped same day. Okay. Um, anything? Oh, we also, what's today? Today's the... Tuesday. All day. What day, though? The 11th. Okay. So, through the 18th, 
of April. We uh, are also running a special 15% uh, off our 101 class. Uh, so if you book a class, it doesn't have to be the class in April, you can book any of our 101 classes, uh, you will get 15% off that class, even if it's the class that's in, what is it, April, May, June, I can't remember what all our dates are, but uh, you can save 15%, and the coupon code for that is tax day, nope, tax code 15. That does require a coupon code. The 10% off and the free shipping, no code. All right, so that's gonna automatically give you that discount when you check out. Okay, we have any questions? No, everything looks pretty good. That's because I have the best moderators ever. That's why. Um, so I will tell you things are gonna change a little bit. So what I'm gonna start doing is I'm gonna start doing lives twice a month. Okay, instead of every week, I'm gonna do them every other week. And I'm gonna be having special guests fill in for me on those other weeks. Uh, I just kinda need a break a little bit. I've got so much going on and my mom's, you know, not feeling great and just a lot of things going on. So it's gonna help me and my mental <laughs> wellness to cut back and do uh, lives every other week. So uh, I will always let you know um, who's going to be the next week as soon as we kind of get it lined out so you guys will know. But I can promise you there's so much talent out there that um, if someone's able to go live and has have what they need to go live and they feel comfortable about going live, then we will bring you all kind of things, guys. And it, it's not going to be just countertop stuff. It's going to be some really cool stuff. And I'll tell you right now, next week's live is going to be uh, Leslie. And she is going to show you guys how to take some finishes that you guys are used to doing on a countertop, uh, the melded techniques. And she's going to show you how to put it on a tumbler. What? All right. So it's going to be cool. She is, that woman can do some tumblers now. She does some cool stuff. So that's going to be next week. Um... I was gonna say something else. I can't. I had some more announcements. I can't remember. <laughs> um, you should write them down. I know. I should write them down. Okay. Do you guys have any questions? Saturday morning coffee with me. What has been fun? We've had two so far. Lots of fun. Erica joined me the first time. Kenny joined me last time, and I can't even tell you who may show up this saturday i'm not real sure mm, um i wonder who i wonder who so anyway i will <laughs> i will it'll be a surprise so saturday morning i bet you it would be me coffee with me 9 a.m and guys it is a free-for-all i can't even tell you what we're going to talk talk about it could be anything from my hair to my lipsticks to feeding the horses lipstick? to how to do hey, yeah somebody asked me what lipstick i wore so it could be any of that. It's going to be just whatever, all right? So we're just going to have fun. We're going to drink coffee, have a good time. Uh, okay, I guess that's it. Is that it? I guess. Anything you want to say, my darling? Thank you, everybody, for uh, joining us tonight. It's, uh, there's a lot of chatter out there, and um, hopefully y'all you found some of this um, entertaining entertaining yes. and uh, maybe you've got some tricks to put up your sleeve yeah remember if you're new let me know in the comments let me know where you're from okay and check out our website rk3designs.com for all of these products all righty guys until next week i won't see you next week actually <laughs> actually i will be here leslie's gonna do the live you're gonna be uh, Leslie You're gonna and be I have a bet. Vanna. Well, Leslie and or are I... you are you doing the camera work? I don't know. You could do the camera work. Well, oh no, I was thinking about doing something else. Well, Leslie no, and I have a playing. bet that I can't be quiet while she does a live. Yeah, right. <sighs> are you saying you're not gonna say a word? I'm saying that I'm going to be in the background. You think that's a possible? No. Let me know in the comments, mm -mm. guys. Do you think I can just hang out and not say anything? No. We'll see. All right. See you next week. 
love you. See you Saturday morning. All righty, guys. Remember, don't be scared. Move forward and be creative. Bye. Adios.